What many experts feel is the most important element in range management is in fact the most neglected. Monitoring and evaluation are the tools you need to determine if your management decisions are effective. To define what we mean by the term monitoring, a consistent collection and examination of information to determine if management decisions are meeting specific goals or objectives over an extended period of time. What you monitor depends on your goals and objectives. To develop an effective monitoring plan, you need to be objective with yourself and your answers. Monitoring requirements that would meet a rancher's goals include identifying goals and objectives. Examples, a goal might be to maintain good soil and plant health to support a sustainable operation. Objectives might include increasing litter surface cover 20%, increasing forage production 30%, reducing fed hay by 50 tons, developing and maintaining grazing use records, maintaining utilization records of key forage species, making decisions using photos and or cover measurements and grazing use records to help you make better informed grazing management decisions in the future. Monitoring enables you to continuously make adjustments to your management strategy when an adjustment is needed. More directly, it gives you the tool or tools needed to assist you when an adjustment is needed. The reason I started monitoring is because when my grandfather um, gave over the management of the ranch to me, I changed some of the uh, um, times of use of the native range and I needed to, to the range the native range was in really good shape at the time I took it over and I wanted to make sure that it stayed in good shape. Positive changes on range land occur gradually over time and are often subtle negative changes can occur quickly and persist for years to come. Without a monitoring plan, you might not see the effects of negative changes until it's too late to adjust or correct those changes. The health of the range land can deteriorate well before you notice problems in livestock performance. Then, it can take years for range land to recover. Now, let's, let's be honest. Human memory tends to fade with time. You really need to document with photos and or written records so that comparisons can be made. Rotating all this stuff around, you know, with the pictures you can sit there and say, but it's working. Mm -hmm. It's like spraying weeds, it's working. And it does help you remember. It does, it does, and then you got the proof, you know, too. You can mm -hmm. go say, well, look at this is what it looked like when we started and this is what it looks like now and we're running more cattle. Let's look at what on your rangeland, or perhaps tame pasture, should be monitored. What kind of plants are growing on your rangeland? Are they productive forage plants? Are they unpalatable or undesirable? Or are they invasive weeds? Improving your grazing management over time will result in positive changes in desirable plant species and rangeland health. Productivity of key forage species can be affected by how many animals can graze in an area for a certain period of time without reducing plant vigor or animal health. You well know that healthy, vigorous, and productive rangeland is needed for the survival of your livestock business. Uh, some of these pastures have been used a little hard in years past. They've been uh, particularly uh, horses on them can be a little hard on some of the grasses and, and we wanted to improve the overall range and uh, by able by monitoring like this we've been able to do that and I think over time we've we've uh, made quite a bit of improvements we're seeing some of the the species we wanted to get rid of slowly dying out and the, and the better grass is coming over over time and we've got our record now of just how that's happened Livestock utilization monitoring helps identify the proportion of current year's forage production that is consumed by grazing animals. Take half, leave half is still a viable concept on Montana rangeland. Where to monitor can be tricky, 
But the best advice is to select an area where you want to see improvement and are willing to make some management changes to affect pasture conditions. Select a site that is fairly representative of the whole pasture. And then additional sites, depending on your goals, may need to be selected, which could include areas not too close to water or defense lines, but not too far from water. So that changes you are documenting along your monitoring transect represent what is truly happening in the pasture as a whole. It may take about an hour to set up a monitoring site the first year. After that, it just takes a matter of minutes at each site to take photos. After a site has been selected, record on a data sheet the pasture name, location in the pasture, maybe draw a general map, and any other pertinent information such as a description of the plant community, distance from roads, watering areas, etc. One example of how to set up a monitoring site. Use a 100-foot measuring tape tightly stretched with between two pins or spikes. One photo was taken from each end of the tape to show the plant community in a landscape setting. Include the horizon in each photo that helps with finding the site for the future. A GPS instrument, if available, is also invaluable to help assist in finding that transect location. Five photos are also taken at specific points evenly spaced along the tape at the ground level. Using a 3x3 three three frame could be made from PVC, metal, or carpenter's rules or other materials. A date sheet or photo board is set next to each of the five frames to show the name of the pasture, the date, the transact number, and a unique identifier for each of the five photos. After the initial transect is set up, permanent stakes commonly plastic orange survey stakes are hammered into the ground so that the transect will be easier to find the next year and will serve as boundary markers to stretch the tape in subsequent years. It is a good idea to take the photos at about the same time each year, preferably at some time during the growing season. That time June through August is best. To determine utilization, stubble height should be measured within 10 days after animals have been removed from the pasture. Keep the photo prints in albums or in your computer for removable storage. Each photo shot from a specific point for a specific year on the 100-foot tape should be placed next to photos that were taken at the same point to make comparisons between years. Review and compare your photos with your grazing use records. Grazing records should include turn-in and turn-out dates, numbers and class of livestock, weather events, unusual insect events, and wildlife use. Develop a grazing plan for the coming year based on those records and your goals for each pasture. A good time to do this is during the winter when you have time to sit down at a table and take a good look. This is an appropriate time to schedule time to discuss your monitoring plan and management objectives with an NRCS range conservationist or a consultant. It is important to monitor the ground cover and the canopy cover. There needs to be enough vegetation to protect the soil surface from evaporation or erosion. This can be accomplished with photographs and or cover measurements. Monitoring over time can help determine if the amount of bare ground on range land is increasing or decreasing. I wanted it to hand it on to the next generation uh, in the same condition that I received it in. And the only way to determine if it's in the same condition is by taking photos of it and, and looking back at those photos and determining which direction the rangeland is going. Is it getting better or is it getting worse or, or things of that sort. 
Consistent monitoring of plant species composition can tell you if forage production of key forage species is increasing or decreasing. It also provides information on the location and number of undesirable or poisonous plants. Climatic shifts from drier to wetter rainfall years can change plant composition and production on grazing land. Maintaining records of rainfall during the year can help you determine how climate is impacting your rangeland. And that helps you make adjustments in stocking rates in wet or dry years. Let's put this monitoring discussion in more practical terms. It's a matter of a, a couple hours once a year to take and go out and do the monitoring. And if a person can't find the time enough for that, uh, you actually should be spending more time at it. Now let's review our key points. Take photographs. Comparing photos, including close-ups and general views of the same area taken over a period of years, documents changes in the plant community. And or collect data on vegetation, including elements like plant species composition, canopy cover, ground cover, and noxious weed density. This can help you detect subtle changes that occur over the long term. Record and document livestock numbers and turn in and turn out dates to help you determine what is causing rangeland to positively or negatively respond. Keeping good grazing records helps determine the why am I going in the right direction or why am I going in the opposite direction counter to my goals and objectives. During the grazing season, map the pattern of pasture utilization by measuring stubble height or determining utilization levels of key forage species to help identify underused or overused areas within a pasture. As far as how much and where monitoring should be practiced, select key areas that are representative of the pasture as a whole in terms of types of soil, vegetation, slope, aspect, and distance from water, trails, and fences. One to two monitoring sites per herd would be sufficient for a three to five pasture area grazed during the growing season. You may find it helpful to monitor critical areas such as new noxious weed invasions or a newly developing head cut and drainage to determine how well your management decisions are affecting these areas. You could also select areas where you may expect significant improvements in the near future with changes in grazing management. An example of this would be adjacent to perennial streams. Select easily accessible areas. Remember to select areas that are away from those places that livestock tend to congregate, such as salting locations, watering holes, or along fences. To get started with your monitoring plan, set your overall vision and goals for your ranch, reflecting your personal values, desired landscape, and level of production. Survey your ranch with an eye toward current resource conditions and production. Relate this to what your desired vision would be. You may want to focus on problem areas where you clearly see the need for improvement. Identify your key monitoring sites and find what information is available on the history of grazing use on the property if this is unknown. Specifically, define what you want each of your key areas to look like in the future and set realistic goals or objectives. Make a commitment of your time. A rancher should set aside some time each year for monitoring and for mapping usage levels. A couple hours a year and, and, uh, and then sit down during the winter when you've got time and get all those photos out lay them out and start looking at each one of these transects and, and uh, then you can take and really see it. It's just uh, when you've got the time to take and do the studying and accumulate the data then and, and analyze it during the winter, that's great, but only a couple hours in the summer. It's not hard to take and get done at all. Select monitoring tasks that have specific objectives, making the process faster and easier. Use your monitoring documentation to make decisions prior to the next grazing season. Put a high priority on allowing yourself time to compile, organize, and interpret the monitoring information you gather. Well, we've definitely increased the production. 
of the ground but the monitoring I guess the monitoring I was doing it some before with the rotation at different time of year the hitting the grass but the monitoring really I guess proves to you that it works mm -hmm. and that it turns around so quick a good monitoring plan with appropriate follow-up can ensure the quickest route to reaching your goals technical assistance is available from the Natural Resources Conservation Service and the Montana State University Extension Service. There are also private consultants who can help with your monitoring efforts. <laughs>